thank you for tuning in in this video i'm going to show you how you can configure iscsi shares on your true nas server and to give you a brief introduction of iscsi well it is a internet small computer system interface which is a protocol to uh, deliver the block level data across your network and if you are in need of block storage solution then you can configure the iscsi shares on your true nas and you can leverage the um, shares that you create on the true nas on your windows systems on your hypervisors on your servers so in this video i'm going to show you how you can configure iscsi share on your true nas device on your true nas server and how you can attach the iscsi learn or the block storage that you create on any of your hypervisor for uh, example in my case i'm going to take the xcpng which is similar to the zen server and for the vmware solution vmware hypervisor esxi well you can follow the instruction and most of the steps that you see here in this tutorial will remain the same for the vmware um, hypervisor as well so uh, let's get started in the beginning if you go to well let me show you the version that i'm running right now okay this is 12.0 u7 and let me go to the services so in the beginning if you start the configuration make sure you enable the service all right now that the service is enabled let's go to our sharing so here you can see block shares iscsi well in the beginning target global configuration you will have to follow the naming convention which is given in this particular rfc 3721 okay so make sure you go through this uh, rfc to understand the naming convention how it uses the iq and standard for uh, naming your uh, i s e s i shares so i'm going to follow this just for the reference and i'm going to configure my true nas server for i s e s i block shares and uh, for different hypervisors uh, they might have a different uh, set of instructions for example uh, vmware as i was uh, going through the documentation of vmware i was able to see that they follow two naming convention one is the iqn and another one is the eui so make sure you you know sort of follow the instructions given by the vendor regarding the iscsi shares and uh, they have explained the usage or how you can create the iq and name all right so let's get back to our configuration our domain name is and you can change this to the current year this is just for the demonstration okay so i am following the instructions that that are given in the rfc to you know compose your iq and name and then this is the ip address of your target which is going to be my true nas server
and uh, if you want you can set the threshold here which will then uh, you know notify you if you cross or at least reach that thresh threshold percentage on the block shares so i'm not going to configure it if you want you can configure the same well, let's try to configure it as 70. And you can do the same thing using the wizard here, but I'm not going to use wizard. And then next thing is the portal configuration. Click on add. Description. And then the authentication method, keep it to none. Or if you have chap or mutual chap, then make sure you configure those and then click the appropriate option. In my case, I am not using chap. So I'm keeping it as none. Okay, this particular option is required when the discovery authentication method is set to chap or mutual chap, which I don't have. So I'm keeping it as blank. And if you select 000, that means it will accept traffic on all the IPs and the standard ports 3260. Click on submit. So this is the IP and port on which it will be listening to. So 0000, zero, zero, zero means it will accept the traffic on all the IPs configured. So let's go to the initiator group. Well, if you have any specific initiator, for example, um, let me show you the initiator. As of now, you'll not be able to see the initiator. So I'll, I'll show you in some time. So as of now, I'm allowing all the initiator, but then if you, have any specific initiator or a group which only should have the access to this uh, block share then you can initiate the connection from those initiator towards this iesesi uh, you know block share and then once it is connected the entries will show up here and then you have to select the entry and click this option to move it to the other side I'll show you the option. As of now, I'm allowing all the initiator. So now that we are done with the initiator group, now let's go to the authorized access. Click on add, name the group or um, enter the ID for the group, click one. Okay, since I don't have any sort of authentication or I don't want any sort of authentication, so I'm not going to configure this authorized access, but if you want, you can configure the same. So now comes to the target, click on add, name of the target. Okay, so this should be same as what? Okay, let's try to keep this name. Okay, it is again asking us to follow the RFC 3721. Okay, so I'm clicking this option. This is the group ID that we created. Allow all initiator I'm selecting, initiator group ID. Authentication is none. None. Click on submit. Okay, now that we have the configuration for targets, Then comes the extents, click on add. Mm -hmm. 
let's name it as hi scarcity let's try to click device instead of file and let's try to select the device which is our ada0 which is my uh, ssd attached to the server and let's not change the logical block size and click on submit now comes the associated target Click on this, check the target that you created, IQN, yeah. And the LUN ID, by default it takes zero, I guess, but let, let's try to go with the default settings, extent. This was the one that we created in the last step. Now let's try to take the automatic option. Okay, now the uh, ISESI share is all uh, set to serve the initiators. Now let's try to, you know, go to our hypervisor and attach this block. Okay. Okay, I've selected the option as IACSI. Click on next, name it as. This is my XCP NG hypervisor. Target host name or IP address. In my case, it is. And the port is 3260, which is the default port. I am not using any JAP authentication can for the target host it is able to see and select the option here target iqn this was the one that we created on the true nas server it is showing up our lun which is lun zero lun is basically the logical storage And this is my SSD that is attached to the TrueNAS server. And right now the target is using that device. Click on finish. Now that it is scanning for LVM, it will ask me to reinitialize that LUN. And it will format the LUN as well. So click yes might take some time to complete the operation but then once done the server will see this iesesi block storage as a local storage so it basically uses the sesi protocol which runs on top of the which runs on top of your tcp ip protocol and it takes your sesi commands along with the block level data and then once when, when it once it reaches the target or when it, once it reaches the initiator machine, once the communication or the once the initiator is connected to the target, the initiator machine will take the block level data as a local storage data, and you will see the block storage or the devices or the drive local to the system and you can install anything on that system just like the way you install on your locally attached device you can see here iscsi test all right um that's all in this video I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any questions, do leave them in the comment section and 
please do subscribe to my channel hit the like button if you really enjoyed the tutorial and see you in the next video have a good day bye